It's still the breakfast in Plus TV Africa. It's time where we look at uh, the dailies in the country. Uh, we have the Daily Trust newspaper and Chris Kane they want to de-trabalize Nigeria is here with us. Good morning, Chris. It's good to have you join us. It's nice to see you beautiful people this morning. Good morning, this morning. Right, then, uh, like I mentioned earlier on, we have the Daily Trust and all the papers uh, has been made available by the paper vendor. No more negotiation with federal government. That's what ASU is saying. It feels like ASU is really, really angry. Declares indefinite strike. Lecturers resigning in droves at Unilag. And they're heartless. Nan says quoted to say, who is heartless? Their decision not binding on state universities, Port Chancellor is a quoted to say, these are the writers you find underneath the bold caption. But away from there, you have more interesting headlines. And bandits, federal government releases 6.25 billion naira for cattle ranches in Katsina. Oh, wow. Traders count losses as flawed sacks, canoes, canteen, quarry market. And again, a uh, crowd defies downpour as a Tiku IU orders receive Shakarao. Federal government may borrow 11 trillion for 2023 budget as deficit rises above 100%. Oh, I'm just wondering where this leaves us. <laughs> uh, Hush Poppy caught bars federal government from extraditing Kayari to the United States. Politicians see election as war, INEC is saying. That's ahead of the 2023 elections. And women lures kid with biscuit steals two-year-old in uh, Niger or Niger. And that's it. All right, let's uh, move over to the next paper. This happens to be the Nation newspaper. It has some interesting headlines on the front page. Uh, big one there. PDP crisis setback for article week reconciliation. That the nation is really interested in this one uh, crisis in the PDP. Uh, PDP crisis setback for Article Week A reconciliation. Right as to that headline, Article's men rally party organs for Chairman Ayu. Uh, something will happen soon, says Rivers Governor. He went to commission another road. You know, some people say if Week A wants to make a statement, he will look for a road to commission or to flag off and call the press. <laughs> uh, something will happen soon. He said, give a hint. And some people are reading meaning uh, into what he's saying. More from the nation. World Bank excludes Nigeria from $315 million food security cash. Uh, court declines government's request to extract Abba Kari to the United States. We talk about that in depth in our first major conversation this morning. I'm here for higher calling, says Tinubu. Uh, gas powered buses for use on Marina Aja Ekbe route. That's a good one. Asu declares total indefinite strike. State vasty is not under obligation to implement federal government agreements with unions. Um, more from the nation. Shekarao returns to PDP. And of course, uh, Atiku has been talking tough, saying that uh, he is coming with votes for him to win Kanu. Votes for capital projects unlikely in 2023 budget, says Finance Minister. Federal government plans 19.76 trillion naira budget with 12.41 trillion uh, naira deficit. It's uh, something I saw last night and it was really it's worrying. We'll get a, a guest take on this. Uh, Buhari signs civil aviation, six other bills into law. IG, no to assault on police men. So the IG is saying those are the headlines on the front page of the nation. Away from the nation, we have the punch. Uh, 12 trillion naira deficit worries federal government. Debts may hit 54 trillion naira. 19.76 uh, trillion budget proposal. So uh, we're, we're probably just worried that uh, uh, we might be borrowing more. That's what it means. Revenue shortfalls to hamper capital project funding. Federal government says insecurity threatens the FDIS. Nigeria economy shrinks by 63 billion naira. 28 sectors struggle. Government decries petrol subsidy. Airlines caught workforce over aviation crisis. Families grown as kerosene price increases by 99%. Six out of 10 doctors leaving Nigeria nad laments, <laughs> just as you have uh, you know, the Nigerian Medical Association complaining. And most importantly, it's the fact that it's affected, you know, the ratio to the ratio of patients uh, 
or doctor to patient uh, relation right there. WK vows to name candidates planning Luton. As to declares indefinite strike plans increase media engagement. Walk for Tiku's victory, Shakira's, Shakira urges supporters. And uh, you find explosion near RCCG camp in just two and raises uh, trucks. Please plan fresh screening for protesting constables. <laughs> and man arrested for stealing 15-year-old child in Lagos. Generator fumes kills Enugu groom wedding guests purportedly. And that's what you find. That's it on the Punch newspaper. All right, let's uh, get into the thick of things uh, with our guest, uh, Chris Kane Wando, who is joining us right here uh, online from Lagos. Um, starting with the budget, 12 trillion naira in deficit. I mean, for some people, it was not um, the size of the budget, but that little, little small problem of the deficit. Where are we headed to um, in the country, Chris Kane Wando? Do you think um, government may, may go broke? Um, being already broke, but can they fully implement this budget where all the money come from? What exactly is going on? What are your thoughts on this, Chris? Can you wonder? As rightly said, you asked know, whether our government, uh, we, we, we already broke. Um, the nation is broke. And um, that's why we have been burying without, uh, without season. Um, you, know, you, know, you know, in football, for us, the love of uh, premiership, we have on and off season. Uh, we just started the new season. So when you're off season, then everything goes quiet. But uh, in Nigeria, we borrow with our citizens. And the, the legislators are not making matters uh, better for us because they have said it, especially the Senate, that whatever the president brings, they will approve. And that's what has been happening. Um, we are not even making what we, what we are even doing now is servicing the debt. Is it the, uh, we are not even servicing the debt. What we are doing is just try, uh, the interest on the debt. And it continues piling. You can see from what we are seeing from that paper, we are looking at about 54 trillion in the next few months. And that goes to show you the debt portfolio of, um, of Nigeria. And the most uh, unheard of uh, in, the, uh, in the lifespan of this country of over 60 years is where we are borrowing money to drive our budget. You have a budget and you are borrowing money to be able to implement it. I have never had where it is done in the world. And it's such only up in Nigeria. And our government are not even taking out of the post. Everybody seems to have resigned themselves to fate. Um, the only thing they depend on is the, is the crude oil which we export. And now we are even having serious challenges with the level of theft of uh, the crude that we are not even able to meet our open quota and being given us uh, 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 our supply. And that in itself is having so much uh, push uh on the resources and after it will say the time without number that we should be able to allow the states to be able to do the needful and that is what we need to think out with our constitution where you can develop uh develop more powers to the state to be able to do let, let me give you a classical example i see no reason why a state like aquaibo river state um a delta state by and uh, name it, cannot be given the opportunity to have their own refining uh, uh, refining uh, companies. Yes, but you know that uh, when it comes to issue of oil, it is uh, really exclusive because this is where you're getting these things from. If you can be able to encourage them to be able to go into this and also establish their own refineries, we might not be able to run this kind of problem we're having now, but what, what happens? The federal government is just like the big elephant in the house. They have decided to corner everything to itself and even the uh, resources that are coming, the federal government takes uh, close to about 50, over 50 percent, and that share the remaining among the state and the 774 local government area. We cannot continue to go this way. It is just terrible, and I don't see any solution out of the wood for now. But Chris, I mean, sh should we go? Um, should we continue in this uh, pattern and this uh, thoughts that we have? For instance, you have mentioned that. Uh, you don't have an, you don't know why other states, I mean, states like Akwai Boom, among others, are not allow, allowed to refine their product. Should we still be talking about, you know, channeling all of our energies to the oil sector? Well, we understand that right now there's even a court. OPEC is saying uh, oil producing nation had to have to reduce, 
you know, caught. There should be a court in terms of the output that's been given, right? And we also know that we had struggled over time to meet the quota that's been also given by uh, OPEC. Don't we have other areas where we can generate revenue, where we can actually uh, make some earnings apart from oil? Do we always have to talk about oil and allowing other states to, um, you know, refine their products? Is that the only means of survival for us? No, it's not. But uh, Messi, every country has its cash cow. Our cash cow is oil. And if we invest uh, effectively in that, then we'll be having so much problem. Of course, countries like what, what does uh, Saudi Arabia export? What does, um, if you look at other countries that into this, so it's, it's, that is our country. What I'm saying is that we are not even getting it right. For example, our, part of our problem now is foreign exchange earning, cash crunch. And out of that, we are spending so much to import the petroleum products. So if we can be able to conserve what those importations, most of those um, foreign exchange, dollars and rest of them, we will be able to use it to do other things. Look at the, what is happening in the aviation sector. Most of the foreign airlines have, have threatened to pull out of the country because they cannot repatriate their foreign their, their money back to their country. They are not going to give their money in dollars. It's going to be in dollars. And said so that it's crying that they don't even have dollars. Now they have just the federal um, the federal bank has just approved about 260 million um, dollars to be shared among them, and which is just a drop option. So what I'm saying in essence is that if states like Aquaibon have mentioned, Cross River, Delta, Rivers, and most of them, have the capacity of refining those, since the government has it cannot even do anything. The one they have in Kaduna, the one they have, they have in Worry, the refinery they have in Portacourt, are in total commercials and it's not working. We're waiting on them to come on stream. If those states have the capacity of it, they will be able to refine those crude oil. They can buy, oh, let us even take it that they even buy the crude oil off the federal government and refine and distribute up within Nigeria. That will save us a lot of foreign exchange. No, we're not even importing now. What we're trying to conserve what we have and make sure that we don't import as much as we are doing now. We are importing close but, to about 90% of, of this you, petroleum you can product. Actually but say I agree with you that it's not only petroleum product. We have agriculture. We have agriculture which we can also benefit from. We, we, in the past, in the 60s, Nigeria was noted for agriculture, not, not petroleum. It's not for not food oil. We are so good. In, this, in the West, they were doing cocoa. In the... Uh, 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 in the in the in north, we had um, granots. As well, you remember those granot pyramids. In the east, there was palm oil. We had so much. Even currently, as it were, and that is what I'm talking about, constitutional amendment. Most of the states cannot even harness the mineral resources. We just go to Kogi and see the kind of um, uh, mineral resources we have. In Kogi. There's iron ore. There's gold. Every there's gold. There's so many things that we can. But the government seems to be good, and that is why I continue to say that. The National Assembly, as we have presently, are not doing the need. All they are interested in is electoral reform. Electoral reform. I think that is the only problem Nigeria has. But Chris Kane, the one, do, I mean, just before Kofi comes in here, uh, importation, are you saying that it's because we're only importing oil? Because, uh, I mean, a foreign exchange issues that we're having is because of our importation on the cash cow, which is in the oil sector, having to import refined products. Because we, we, we seem to be importing almost everything. We import everything, we not, medicines, yeah. cell phones, we import um, toothpicks, we import fish, we import, uh, what are those things again? Poultry products, poultry eggs, dairy products. There's really almost nothing that we don't import into Nigeria. So how will, um, you know, the foreign exchange not suffer where the country, whether the private sector or even the government is not importing almost everything? And some of these things we have the capacity to produce. So why are we not producing? We are more of a consumerist a nation. What we consume, that's all we know to do. I mean, that's, it feels like that's all that we know how to do. So just import and import and import. And we're not, what are we exporting really? So I, I would really not want to agree with you on the sense, in the sense that, you know, just the importation of uh, uh, our cash cow is the problem. We're importing in almost every sector, in almost every category you look at. Merci. If yes. we stop importation of oil, we will cut it will cut it by over 50%. I can tell you that. Because 
first and foremost, you have to understand the dynamics of uh, uh, um, economics. The first remain is that we are spending so much in importation, not only importation, also subsidy. Go and check out how much you pay for subsidy on a daily basis and the level of corruption within the system. I totally agree with you. I've said it. We need to channel our energy into that, not only um, agriculture, even, even IT. We can be able to get enough out of IT. A country like India, what do they what do they export? IT. They make so much money from IT. And also, all that is so I still believe that the fact is that we are not looking at the right places. The government seems to have just resigned its faith to just exporting more, um, oil. And what we don't export more, uh, oil, that is the end. That is not being creative. Every other country is looking for talent. Let me give you a practical example. A, a state like California has set um, 2035 for uh, the stoppage of uh, vehicles using fuel. By 2035, you not think any single vehicle in California using petrol. What does that mean? That means they're looking ahead, they're looking at electric cars. That as, is a country that has vision. Not the kind of problem we're having, issue we're having here with, fish, with leaders that have no vision, that don't even know their left from their right. All right, Let, let's uh, look at the ASU Ash situation with a number of papers, the papers this morning taking, uh, lending some space to that. I'm sure you're very aware, aware of the issues and the indefinite strike being declared by the union. The nation puts it this way, ASU declares total indefinite strike. Very quickly, your thoughts. Kofi, for the first time, I totally, it seems to be um, moving against ASU. I think they are stretching it too far for me. I, I don't know. The government said it has made about 80% of the demands of ASU, and ASU still were bent at going on indefinite strike now. That is negotiation. I'm an, a, 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 a chartered arbitrator, and I know that the negotiation that is give and take, you don't just remain on your stand and say, it's either it's done my way, nothing. It, is, it, it, is not, it doesn't go that way. Even for any reason, even the cost of uh, negotiation, that's the time you, you, you step back and strategize and part of the strategizing could also be how the schools will open and continue your negotiation with the government. Yes, I agree totally that the government in its wisdom has failed in meeting the demand of us. When you sign a contract with a union, you have to make sure. You have to make sure that that the terms of that agreement is totally uh, but there's no hundred percent uh give when it comes to negotiation. You have to open my own concern is not as soon now, but the students have been sitting as well for close to one year. Most of even the lecturers are already moving. Out. I know of a university lecturer in one of the Southwest, Southwest University that yesterday relocated to United Kingdom with her, her children and her husband. And do you know what she did? She is a PhD holder. She applied for a master's degree in, in the UK university. To, to study so that you can have the opportunity of moving ahead. And there are so many of them moving away, moving out already. So I think that this should be resolved, but also to also be able to give. I've not seen what ASO has given so far. I may be wrong, but it's besides time that this just, even Nancy itself, Nancy as a body, I read what they were saying that condemning ASO, that ASO is, being, is taking a very, very strong stand. At the end of it all, ASO may lose. The sympathy of the people which they have been riding on for the past so, so months. Now the state university are tightly pulling out. So many of the state universities are opening, and that in itself is going to be a break in the ranks of this thing. I believe that this is the time for us to be able to do the needful, meet government halfway, open up the university, and continue the, their negotiation. If they now give them an ultimatum to meet up those demands and they don't meet it again, there's a possibility of also engaging them in strike again. But this is getting to declare an indefinite strike is not Chris, the best uh, for the university system. But Chris, really, uh, I mean, uh, would you blame ASU because ASU has always met the government halfway? 2009, renegotiating agreements from 2009. This is uh, 2022. Is this not a trust issue? Should you really blame ASU? Yes. And I said it, I said I blame the government initially. I said the government not been able to meet the demand or be able to stick to its agreement with the with the electorate is a big factor. But that does not also necessarily mean that also should not be able to do the needful life. For goodness sake, irrespective, when two elephants fight, is the is the grass that suffers. 
What is the plight of the students in all this? Let's even forget us meeting us or not meeting us of federal government. What is the plight of the student in all this? A generation all is right, being wasted. We have to go. We, we have, have to go. Generation. We have to go. You, you said I'm it all. I'm sure we'll I'm have time for a, 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 a more in-depth conversation on ASU because, I mean, the issues are lingering. But I want to thank you so much for your in-depth analysis and look forward to having you uh, with us again next time. Thank you very much for having me. Have a wonderful day. All right. That's Messi rightly introduced him, the detribalized Nigerian. <laughs> Interesting. He has to give me royalty for that name. All right. Up next, we have a discussion uh, uh, on uh, legal issues. Of course, um, Abakari, Hush Puppy, and a certain uh, Bubaka Malami SEN in the plot, in the picture, in the story. We'll be right back. Please stay with us. Well, then, let's let you know what happened today in history. Stay with us.